Harris. Okay, did you already do the introduction? I did the introduction. Excellent. All right. The, the two questions were, what's the best thing about me is I'm a proud grandfather. And the other question was. The second question was, uh, well, I haven't asked you the second question because well, here it is now. Uh, okay. how, how do you like to connect people? With stories. That way, when I do an email introduction between two people, if I'm doing my homework correctly, when I meet them, I'll make a little note about some, something about them that's interesting to talk about. And I will introduce Roger to, I have a friend, Aaron Price on here. I would introduce Roger to Aaron, who they are, why I'm connecting them. And then I'll say, Roger, when you and Aaron meet, ask Aaron about this, why she moved to where she's living now. And Aaron, when you meet Roger, ask him about how his, his second book launch went. So immediately when they meet, they talk about that. You don't want to talk about business right out of the gate. You want to connect personally. So you start telling stories and sharing those. You start laughing. And the uh, one of them usually goes, oh, I've been there before. Oh, I've read that. I've seen that. And they instantly start to become friends. There's a bonding experience. And then they get to the business because we refer people we know, like, and trust. So anytime you can get two people talking about something other than business, so they can connect, you're good to go. That is so so simple and so original. But you gotta uh, take notes when you do a one-to-one -one with somebody, you gotta take notes. So. <laughs> so participants, if you have questions, as I'm sure you will during the chat, uh, during Mike's training, would you please type them into the chat and I will pose them uh, to Mike during his talk. Uh, second recommendation is that uh, you'll be sent a link to the recording of this talk in a few hours, but I encourage you to take notes anyway, because the simple act of taking notes will help what you absorb by as much as 30%. Mike, I think if you're ready to rock the stage, it's time for you to take it away. Well, thank you, Roger. Good evening, everybody. Very happy to be here. I am in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm a business coach and a podcaster here in Raleigh, North Carolina. And you might wonder how I connected with the folks in Vancouver. About, I think it was early October, I was just scrolling through Facebook one day. And there's a lady that put a question in one of the Facebook groups says, I'm looking for podcasters. And I just said, I have two podcasts. How can I help? And she asked me to come uh, present to her networking group about podcasts. So I got there, met some people, one of the other ladies there, uh, Carolyn McEwitt, who I think some of you have heard her speak before, was in the group and she said, oh, you need to come to Grand Connection. And so a couple of weeks later, I went to a Grand Connection event and either the first or second event there, I met Roger. None of this would have happened had COVID not happened because it forced me to get out of my little area of Raleigh, North Carolina and start networking outside the state and it took me outside the country. I made some wonderful friends doing this and I hope to make even more, but that's what got me here. So I'm very happy to be here today to talk about your elevator pitch. Do you realize that that is part of your sales and marketing program? Because we're all selling. Sometimes we're selling without selling when we meet someone, but we're always representing our business and so we're always selling. If you're ever at a networking event in person one day, and I've quit uh, guessing when, where we are on the arc of COVID, but I know one day will we, get, we will get back to in-person networking events. And somebody says, who here is in sales? Take a look around the room. And if there's 40 people there, about seven will raise their hand. And folks, we're all in sales. No matter what you're doing, representing your company, we're all in sales. So think about this as part of your sales and marketing plan. You may have 30 seconds in front of somebody that you've never seen before and you may not see again. So you will want to make a memorable connection, hopefully on a personal level. And for those of you that are small business owners, uh, I applaud you. I tell everybody that asks what it's like to be a small business owner, I tell them it is stressful freedom because usually it's both every day. But your elevator pitch is three things. It is personal, it is about stories, and it's about solutions. 
always remember this when in doubt, tell a story. And you'll see some common themes going through this presentation that tie everything together on what we need to think about when we're talking about our elevator pitch. So what to expect today, why you need a good pitch. We're gonna talk about that. People may not be listening to everything you say, just like every time I make a presentation, I know not everybody's listening to everything I say. So that's why you need to make sure you are memorable. We're gonna talk about what goes into a story we connect people, we explain our day by a story. Earlier, before we started here, we're just talking about some things anybody did today and a couple of us took a nap and we started telling a couple stories just talking about that. But if you think about your day when you meet someone or talk to someone and they ask you what happened or how's your day, you usually go into a story. And the reason why you need to always keep stories in your mind and ready to go is you don't have to memorize them. Somebody says, hey, tell me about your last client or what do you do? When in doubt, go to a story. It takes the pressure off trying to memorize corporate speak, the 12 services that your company does. So when in doubt, tell a story. Why should they have, or what, excuse me, what they should have said. I think we've all been at uh, networking events where somebody said stuff that just didn't connect with you. So we're going to talk about that. It is personal. Your story should be personal. We refer people that we know, like, and trust. When we are good at what we do, are we the best in the world? Probably not, but we're pretty darn good and we're worth referring, so it is personal. Keywords and phrases. We're going to talk about things you should think about adding to your elevator pitch so you are more, more memorable, but more important, you can answer some questions and offer solutions, and then we'll get to next steps. Wonderful quote from Winston Churchill here. If you want me to speak for two minutes, it'll take me three weeks to prepare. If you want me to speak for 30 minutes, it will take me a week to prepare. If you want me to speak for an hour, I'm ready now. That's how difficult an elevator pitch can be, especially when it's only 30 seconds. And we have to be very focused, very specific on what we're saying. We want to talk about one thing, and it, it's rude to say this, but if you're at a networking event, you get 30 seconds. It's not good to take the first 12 seconds saying hi to everybody, welcoming, can you hear me? Just start. You can network before and after the event, but if you've got 30 seconds and they're timing you, get into it as quick as you can. Our niche and why it is important. It might be your only chance in front of people. Think about when someone comes up to your front door, you're sitting home Saturday afternoon, you hear a knock on the door and you know it's probably a salesperson because you're not expecting anybody. Are you buying on your front porch on the spot? Maybe yes, maybe no. They may so say something that triggers you. They, it may be the, the cable person or the internet person. And instead of going into a minute of the history of the company, they may come right out of the gate and ask you, how's your speed these, these days? Are you getting online quick enough? Are you having any, any frustrations with your internet service or cable service? So think about when you're in front of somebody, this may be the only chance you have to get to a problem they might be having, you can offer a solution. It also helps you organize your thoughts. When I did my very first elevator pitch, this was probably, I think, 2013. My brother and I had just bought a commercial cleaning company. And I went to my first networking group. I'd never been to a networking group because I've been in the corporate world, got out, small business owner. And I stood up and tried to put probably 38 facts in about 30 seconds. And it was awful. Nobody remembered it. It didn't register with anybody. And I just felt like I heard, I saw tumbleweeds blowing right by me. That's the reaction I got. So we have to learn to organize our thoughts. Generally, you get one point to make because again, is everybody listening the whole time? And if we try to make them remember two or three things, it might be difficult. It's our job to make it easy for people we meet to either remember us or refer us to someone. And they can do that through a story and they can do that through something they remember. 
The other thing it does, it helps us identify our target market. We need to tell folks where to go fishing for us. Again, how can I make it easy for you to refer me out? I would tell you a part of town I'm looking for. If in, in Raleigh, we have you know several surrounding towns, I may want to work just on the north side of Raleigh. Then I will tell people that. If you are looking for women, tell them that. If you're looking for married couples, tell them that. Senior citizens, college graduates, just tell me where to go fishing for you. And then I can start thinking about who I know in that pond. But if you just say, I can help anybody, just whoever you run across, that's not going to stick with me. And that's not going to make me stop everybody I meet and say, hey, you need help from Roger, don't you? Well, no, they don't because they have no idea why I'm asking them that. So let's make sure when we identify our target market, which is a whole nother conversation, that we tell people, I want to meet these folks. So that's a beauty of a 30 second elevator pitch. And it could be 45 seconds or a minute, it gives you a little bit more luxury to tell a little bit longer story, but it may be your only chance in front of somebody helps you organize your thoughts, which we have to have, because if you do this a lot, 30 seconds goes by fast. And then it also helps us identify our target market. So let's talk about stories. We tell stories every day. We just don't realize it. If somebody asks you how your day is going and it was different than yesterday or something that happened to you was unplanned, you're probably going to start into that story. So the first thing you want to do is who you are. And every time you give an elevator, elevator pitch, start with your name and either your company or what you do, because that's the first thing they're going to hear. They're going to hear and they want to know, okay, ooh, I want to listen to this. But you have to stand up and slowly give them your, you can give them your first and last name if you want to. I could just say, I'm Mike with Wired to Change. I'm a business coach and a podcaster and a grandfather. I could say Mike Manning. They may remember the last name. They may not. But get the first name in, speak slowly, and pause before you start. If you are at an in-person networking event and you're standing up, don't start talking when you're standing up, sliding your chair back. It's going to make noise. They may not hear your name. So make sure you're set and ready to go when you mention your name, but you want to tell them up front who you are. So the second part of the story is the confrontation. We know when we watch a drama or a, some sort of uh, action movie, they set it up at the beginning, they show you the hero, something happens, and they kind of want you want to let you know where it's going from there. Then they get into the confrontation. What happened? What is our hero going to solve for whoever is in the movie with them? That's where you want to start talking about what are the benefits of doing business with you? What solution do you have for their problem? <clears throat> the other reality is as clients, they, we really aren't that interested with somebody's brand or their company as we are with them. And the best example I can give you is my chiropractor, Dr. Ashley. She is welcome to work anywhere in the Raleigh area that she wants. I'm going to see her. So it doesn't matter if she's at ABC Chiropractic or Chiropractic for Old People. It doesn't matter to me. I go where she goes. And then my financial advisor, I go where he goes. So those are the benefits of, of doing business with them is they make my life so good, I'm following them wherever I go. And so you want to make sure you have a solution instead of, hey, we do this we write a program. Okay, well, what does the program do for my business, for my problems, especially as a small business owner? Then the resolution, how you can help them. We have this product, we have this service, within 24 hours, we guarantee to be there. There is an air conditioning company in this area. They may be national here in the States, I don't know. It's called Six and Fix. If you call after six, they'll still get out there. 
perfect. Then you know if you have a problem in the evening, they're on call, ready to go. What solution do you provide for that person's problems in their small business? That's the number one priority that we have to help each other is what problem can I solve? Mike, are you open to a question, a delivery question? Yes, sir, I am. Nicole wants to know, how do you make it not sound like an elevator pitch in a setting with new acquaintances that maybe potential clients are able to refer to? I think the real question is, how do you make the elevator pitch sound natural? Okay, uh, Nicole, can she talk? Can I talk to her real quick? And uh, Nicole, if you would like to unmute. Mike, you can talk to her, whether... Hi. Yep. Hey, Nicole, yeah. how are you? Hi, I'm good. Thanks. Good. What What do you do for a living? Uh, so I'm a uh, landscape designer. I just ah. started a small uh, gardening company kind of during okay. the pandemic. And, and it's, you know, okay. I was just thinking what? when you're saying this that, you know, I just met like a new acquaintance of the other night and I wish done this, okay. you know, mentioned okay. more. So one of the things you want to do, and we're going to talk sense. about this a little bit later, is you want to put their world in their head. So if you met somebody, hey, imagine if your backyard fill in the blank, or if you know kind of where they live. So you want to get into what you can do to them instead of, hey, I've owned this business. We've been in, in the area for 20 years. To immediately ask them, well, when they say, what do you do? Ask them about their backyard or their front yard, or if they've been to a friend's house before, what jumped out at them? Get them into their world as quick as you can. Talk about a previous client. Hey, my name's Nicole. I, let me tell you about a story the other day. I was working with a client and go right into that. Or if, you're, if you grew up in the business and your parents had a landscaping company, Hi, my name's Nicole. I'm with ABC Landscaping. Let me tell you why I do what I do. I love helping people because my I grew up in this business with my parents. I've been to more yards than, I don't know, come up with a funny one-liner there, but get to that point as quick as you can. Does that help you some? Thumbs yeah, up? Yeah, that's great. I really cool. appreciate that. Thank okay. You. Thank you, Nicole. And uh, no further questions, Mike, back to you. Okay, sounds good. All right, so now we're going to go to did you know life is really good and business is really good when simple math is available. And I popped that number out 60,000. This is why we tell stories. Brains process images 60,000 times faster than it processes text. Think about that. I have no idea what 60,000 times faster looks like, but that's pretty fast. The, and that's one of the reasons why social media is so popular. When you're scrolling through Facebook or LinkedIn, are you going to stop at a picture or a quick video before you would stop and read seven paragraphs of text when someone's, someone is explaining what they do? Generally, the answer is yes, because you see that picture and if we do our job correctly in picking out the correct image to post, it's going to immediately tell us something about what I'm about to read. For example, I just posted something this afternoon. Today is Groundhog Day. The movie with Bill Murray, Groundhog Day, same thing happened every day. So I grabbed a picture from the movie. Not everybody gets the movie because it's kind of old, but my generation gets it. And I posted it up there and said basically, Small business owners struggle when they do the same thing every day. But people knew when they saw that image of Bill Murray and the groundhog, hey, that's pretty funny. Let me stop and see what this is. So you want to be memorable with a photo or an image or a video, but that's why social media posts are so good. If the service you provide makes people happy when you are talking about your business, Post a picture of a family of four, Nicole running around in the backyard, playing with their dog, because that's what you're selling them. Yeah, we're selling you a backyard and, and 
and awesome landscaping and, and hardscaping and everything, but you're selling the lifestyle and the ultimate goal is you want to have fun every time you walk out your back door onto your brand new porch with your fire pit or whatever it is, your hot tub, that's the lifestyle you're selling right there. So put those pictures out there because people are going to know real fast. Oh, look at that. And by the way, anytime you can put a dog in a picture, put a dog in a picture, it works. But 60,000 times faster. Here's the other number, 90%. 90% of information is transmitted to the brain visually. Again, the numbers make sense. Here's how you would apply that to a elevator pitch. If there's anybody here that does auto insurance, you could stand up and say, hey, I'm Mike, I work for State Farm. And if you do business with us, don't worry, you're always covered. Eh, you know, are you gonna stay around for the rest of it? Did it grab you right there? Probably not. But if you say, hey, I'm Mike with State Farm, Yesterday, you probably went to school and picked up your kids and you're driving home. And as you're going down the main road, leaving the school out of your right side, here comes a car and it runs a red light in the intersection and your cars crash. Your first thought is, are my kids okay? Am I okay? Check and see if the driver in the other car is okay. Then you start to take stock of, okay, all right, I'm all right. Car's okay. I can get everybody out. And then I would say, if I'm the insurance person, but you're okay, you didn't have to think about anything else because we, rever we reviewed your policy two months ago and you're good. You are totally covered for any accident that happens, but I reviewed your policy with you. So that's why you never had to worry about that. So you want to put their day, their world in their head instead of just going, hey, you do business with us, you're covered. It's a visual, they're picturing themselves leaving school with the kids in the back seat, driving down the road. You always want to get to an image and again, put their world in their head. All right. So you want to put their world in their head because imagine when somebody's selling you something, if you go to, if you go to buy a car, what are they going to talk to you about? They're going to talk to you about safety, they're going to talk to you about gas mileage, saving money. If you're young and single and you want a go fast car, they're going to tell you how fast that car goes. They might tell you about the resale value. They may tell you, hey, while all your buddies are driving that car, you pull up in this, you're the person, you're the man, you're the guy. So put their world in their head. Got a friend of mine, who, her and her husband have a company and they pressure wash the outside of houses. And she could say, hey, we can keep your house clean. We do the outside dirty work. Okay, not too bad. But what she tells people is, and, and for us in the States here on Sunday, we have the Super Bowl coming up. Her elevator pitches the last month have been, so imagine on a Sunday, you're sitting in your recliner all day long watching football. You've got your beer and chips here, not a worry in the world, while we're outside pressure washing your house. Again, put their world in their head, put them in their recliner. Now, the nice thing that does is she, when she has a minute to talk, she follows that up with basically, if you or I go to Home Depot and rent their average pressure washer, it'll take us about seven hours to pressure wash our own house. We're not even talking about the quality of the job yet. We're just talking how long it's going to take. So what do you want? You want to sit in your recliner all day and have a professional do it so your house is the talk of the, of the street or do you want to do it yourself and miss everything on Sunday? So she's putting their world in their head. Another friend of mine owns a company that runs errands for busy people, business and professional errands. She talks regularly that she saves people usually about two hours a week by running their errands or sometimes they'll stock their, they'll do the grocery shopping and then stock the house, stock the, the food. Sometimes they'll even food prep, not always, but, gen, but they always run errands for people. And so what Sherry will tell small business owners, imagine what you would do with two more hours each week. And she just pauses right there. Let's them think for a second and then 
could you, how much money can you make in two hours? What's your closing rate as, as the head lead salesperson in your company? So you're paying us 50 bucks or 60 bucks for two hours of work. How much could you make in those two hours we give you back? Maybe your, your son or daughter has a little league game or an after school event. Guess where you can be now? Anytime you can give time or money back to people, you will get their attention. But again, put their world in their head. There's a handyman I know his only tagline is, I take care of the honeydew list. Plain and simple, couldn't be better because we all know there's always a honeydew list. But he says, I got it, can take care of that. I have a friend of mine has a company, virtual assistant. Again, she's working with CEOs, owners of companies. Imagine if we put this system in place, we take care of this. So you can work on the business, not in the business. The other thing she has started telling them because of COVID is I'm cheaper and better than you hiring someone full time. You got to onboard them. You got to train them. You got to pay benefits. It's cheaper to hire me and my team because this is what we do best. We are trained to do this and I can save you money that way too. So again, you want to put their world in their head and make it personal. Give them time back, give them money back, anything like that you can do, do it and get to that point as quick as you can. Here's one of my favorite things. I know most of us here that have been in networking events, we've heard some good stuff. So this slide is entitled what they should have said. Please, I, I beg you never say meet anybody or I can help anybody. Technically, you probably could, but you could, if you had 40 people show up to your, on your doorstep tomorrow, you probably could not service all of them. So don't ask for all of them just yet. You want specific clients and those 40 people may not want all of your service, they may not pay full price for your service. We go back to ideal clients. Ideal clients are the people that want your service and they're willing to pay full price. Your referral partners and your pond you're fishing in is best if it's a foot wide and a mile deep because those are the people who seek your service or product out and they want to do business with you versus having it a mile wide and a foot deep. People that deal with Nicole know the great work her company does. They want to pay for that. But if her network was a mile wide, oh, I need to connect you with Nicole. Oh yeah, I know her. And there's no connection to that. So you want that thing a foot wide and a mile deep, niche down all you can. There's enough business to be done in most every niche, trust me, you will make money on that. So I'm looking to meet any small business owner. That again, doesn't tell me a thing. Now you're asking me to stop every small business owner I meet every day and ask them if they need your service. Not gonna happen, not gonna happen. Tell me what kind of small business owner you wanna meet. 10 employees or less, this part of town, in this industry, what do you want me to look for? Generic doesn't work. Uh, Roger, I, I see a hand raised. You want to go ahead and do that or just wait till the end of the slide here? Uh, so Christopher, if you have a question, would you type Christoni? If you have a, have a question. Uh, would you well, type I didn't have a question, but um, I thought he uh, asked a question. So I was just going to respond to that, but. Okay. <laughs> Well, go ahead and type that in. I'd love to hear your response, okay? Okay, okay. <laughs> so right. looking to meet any small business owner, be more specific. Make it easy for me and everyone else on this presentation tonight to go find you business. But you got to tell us where to go fishing for you. Uh, I'm a digital marketer, marketer with over 20 years experience. Wonderful. I'm very happy for you. That really doesn't tell me enough information. Now you could be in business for 20 years because your spouse does very well and you make just enough business money to keep your lights on and to shingle outside your door. I don't know that yet. But when you say, 
I want to meet people that hate doing social media, hate posting, can't come up with any content, and they don't do it on a regular basis. Those are the people I want to meet. See the difference? You told me where to go fishing now. Because remember, we're looking for things that come up in normal conversations. And generally, we hear when people are really satisfied or really unsatisfied with a product or service. Think about your, let's say, on Canada Day, the cul-de-sac cookout. All the neighbors are there. Moms are over here talking about this. Dads are over here talking about that. Kids are over here doing whatever they're doing. Natural conversations are school's out. What are you going to do for the summer? We got vacation plans, this new car, whatever it is. Those are the things that come up and use their language. When you will hear one of your friends go, man, I hate doing that. Oh, they couldn't pay me enough to do that. That comes up in natural conversations. So those are the words and the phrases that we're always looking for to give back to people because they will have heard that from somebody they know as well. I'm looking to meet anybody. Man, I just tune out right there. I can't speak for any, everybody else, but I, I can't help you. I need more information because you honestly, as a business coach, I need about 20 people. I'm good. I have to rotate some of them. I don't need 180. I couldn't service 180. Why am I asking for 180? Ask for what you can do and who really wants to do business with you. Looking to meet business owners who don't like their credit card processor, right? This comes up all the time, doesn't it? No, it doesn't because it's not a normal conversation that you have with people. What you should say to be more specific is, I'm looking to meet a restaurant, a, a, a small business owner of a non-chain restaurant that's got breakfast and lunch for about no more than 10 or $12 a meal. Okay, now you got me thinking, the five places I go to are non-chain. Okay, I kind of know two people there. Let me, now, now you've given me something to work with. But any restaurant or any business, credit card processing doesn't come up a lot in conversations. But restaurants you go to do come up in conversations. Or business owners you know real well, that's likely to come up in conversation. So be as specific as you can and help us get there. I'm looking to meet people unhappy with their health insurance. No kidding. A lot of people unhappy, but that kind of comes up in conversation. And it's an uncomfortable conversation to have because it's about health and it's personal. But if somebody says, how you do, if you ask somebody how they're doing, how you feeling? Oh, I had to go to the doctor the other day. Boom. There's your opening right there. If you know them well enough, you can go, man, what was that experience like? And you can get into that, but give me some more information about what you can do to help people that are unhappy. We have supplemental insurance, our insurance is cheaper, something like that. But give me a little bit more specific on what they should do. And I found this the other day, an example of a bad 30 second. And I'm gonna read it verbatim because it's hilarious. There's some things, again, going back to the 20 years in the market, eh, that doesn't separate you yet, doesn't connect us yet. So this company helps other companies become more efficient with their sales through training, evaluation, leadership management, just to name a few. They have a unique approach that's been honed by sales experts over the years, and we've seen our solution really help a lot of companies and teams. Man, what'd you get out of that? Well, first of all, you don't even know what product they're selling or what service they're selling, but there are so many corporate speak phrases and words in there that people are going to tune out. The other one, we, we want everybody to know that we're committed to customer service and excellence. You shouldn't have to tell people you're committed to customer service. You should show people that you are by your clients, by your referral partners, let them tell people. But to stand up and go, we are committed to 100% excellence. Eh, that's good to know, but I don't know that. Now, if you tell me we have a, uh, a no questions asked return policy or we guarantee our work, okay, now you got my attention a little bit. 
but be careful what you're throwing out because you as the consumer, what's going to resonate with you. If somebody stood, if I stood up and said, Hey folks, I've been doing this 12 years, man, a lot of people like me and they love what I'm doing. Is that going to be enough for you? I'm committed to all my clients, uh, raising their revenue by 25%. Yeah, I'm committed to it. Am I making it happen? We don't know yet because we don't know each other. And you probably not talked to anybody I've done business with. So just be careful what you say and be careful of words you use that you have to explain. Mike, um, yes, Paul wants to know, how do you go about practicing your elevator pitch? Thank you, Nicole. Here is how you do that. And we'll talk about this a little later as well. You will work on, when we're done here, you're taking great notes. So you start crafting your own 30 or 45 second elevator pitch. You want to write it down. You want to read it out loud. Make sure it flows for you because remember, you're reading it. First of all, you want to make sure all the words are connected. They make sense. Then you're going to practice it and you're going to record yourself doing this a few times and here's why. When you look back at your recording, I promise you two things are going to happen. One is you're going to hear yourself say something and go, oh, God. That was awful. And the other thing is you're going to listen to yourself and you're going to say, Ooh, I like that. I've got to keep that in there. You're going to hear both. But the most important thing it does when you look at, when you listen and watch yourself on video, that's how we see you. So now you're going to hear what we're hearing. And does it make sense when you hear yourself saying it? That's why that practice is, it's just like anything else. Do you practice your craft? Yes, you probably do. If you write blogs, if you're a business owner, but you're pretty good on social media and you write blogs about your product and service and clients, do you practice that? You probably do. So let's practice this a little bit because remember folks, you get 30 seconds with some people and you may have already tuned out on this. I don't know. Maybe I didn't connect with you quick enough, but when you hear yourself saying it, then you're going to understand what you sound like. We all say, um, we all say all that. We say, so we're going to say those some of those words, but they'll slowly diminish as you get better at this. But you want to listen and watch yourself on camera so you know what we're hearing. Thumbs up, Nicole. Does that work? Beautiful. Okay. Another you, question from yes, Phil McDonnell. Yep. Uh, sounds like what you're suggesting is to paint a picture in the prospect's head like an illustrator dramatizing their worst case scenarios. Then you show, not tell, how you'll help them. Correct. Perfect. Exactly. You, Because remember, we want, as, as, as customers, whether we walk into store or restaurant or buy a product, we need a solution to a problem or issue we have. I love what you do. I hope everybody makes a million dollars, but right now, I got a water leak in my crawl space. I need that fixed. I don't need a sales. I just, I need to be able to call somebody that either I trust or you trust that will come fix it. That's my world right now. And that's my problem. So you are exactly right. Put their world in their head with a picture with something that's going to happen to them in a normal day. Again, if it involves whatever, whatever's evolved in an average day for average people, Put, yes, put that in their head and then sell the solution, not the product. Thanks, we don't care about the product. No Does it solve my problem? No Beautiful. questions. Okay. So we want to make this passionate. We, we've got to connect. It is personal and it should be. I ask everybody, my rule of thumb is, who would you send to your mother's house to do work for your mother? That's who you want to send to everybody else. Because if you've got a referral partner and your mother needs something and you're not confident they can go over there and do that, you either need to find somebody else or figure out why you're not confident in that person. Person, So you want to be able to send to your mother's house, mom, I know John, trust me, I've sent him to 10 people in the last two months. They love him. You're going to love what he does. So if you can send that person to your mother's house 
you probably know them or have used them, but you're going to know them on a, on some sort of personal level. My friend, Robert is a residential property manager. He grew up in the industry. His dad was a property manager. Robert, since he was nine years old, was going to houses on weekends with his dad, fixing things, painting, <clears throat> eventually would cut some grass sometimes if he had to, but that's his passion. That's his world. He knows that. So he can tell the investor, I know your side. He can tell the renter, I know your side, but that's his passion. When people know your passion and it'll come out, they'll get it. Your passion comes out really quick when you're talking about what you enjoy doing and why you do what you do. I love being a business coach. I've owned four small businesses. I love being a business coach. I love the aha moment. My wife and I have two boys. They're grown and moved out of the house. Thankfully, we're grandparents right now. But when they were, and I always throw my grandson in because I just like talking about him. But when our boys were growing up, I coached them in Little League. I love the aha moment of a nine-year-old hitting the ball for the first time as much as I do a 59-year-old business owner getting their business to the next level. That's what drives me is that aha moment. In your 30-second or 45-second pitch, use that. If you are passionate about your business and your craft, I, I don't know about you, but I want to know that. So tell me why you are and then tell me how you got there. Um, a friend of mine, it, Dave, is a strategic connector with business, getting business systems connected so they run more efficiently. And he and I were talking one day. We kept talking. We kept talking. And I finally said, Dave, you like puzzles, right? And he goes, I love puzzles. I said, there's your 30 second right there. Because putting systems together, does your onboarding system talk to your HR does your client onboarding, does your staff talk to that? Do all these systems that are involved in a small business, not computer systems, but sales and marketing system, onboarding system, do they talk to each other? That's important for efficiency. And Dave loves puzzles and he loves whodunit shows. That's why he loves taking a look at, at messes in businesses and putting them together and making them run. That's his passion. So if that's what you like doing, tell people that because they know puzzles. They know they love who done it shows. They can relate to that. So please use that. Talking to a lady the other day is a financial advisor. She got into it because her parents lost their job or the early part of COVID and they didn't have a lot of money and they haven't had. So as the oldest child, she stepped in to help them thought, man, I love doing this, went out and got licensed. And she's also, she was a teacher before this. So now she's going to work with teachers on that particular issue of money, money management, money education, but that's her passion. So I told her when you're telling people about you, tell them you helped your parents. And that triggered like, I, I wanna help more people like that. Friend of mine is a chiropractor, comes from a family of chiropractors, dad, two uncles and a cousin and her are chiropractors. It's in her blood as she says, I got your back. It's in my bones, I got it. But again, that's the passion part of it. Another friend of mine is in Mary Kay, uh, a very successful Mary Kay consultant, but she started as a client, loved the product, started selling the company. So why do you do what you do? My financial ad advisor grew up dirt poor. His mission is to make sure nobody else has that problem when they get to a certain age, that there's a plan in place when they get to be 20 or 22 or whatever age he can get to them to talk about this. But he, he wants to make sure nobody else has to go through what he and his family went through. That's important. So what is your passion? Trust me, most people don't think they have any store, any good stories. And most people don't think others want to hear their stories. I'm here to tell you that's wrong on both counts. People want to hear their stories. They want to know why you do what you do. Your stories resonate with them. Stories, how did I help my last client? I Again, when in doubt, tell a story. Somebody stops you on the street corner. Hey, what do you do? Immediately launch into your last client you help. Let me tell you what I do. I help clients do this. And let me tell you about John, my last client I helped. Always tell a story. First client, last client, most fun client, toughest client, 
biggest problem you solved, whatever it is, tell the story. You have stories and trust me, people will want to hear them. Keywords and phrases. Love these because these are the connectors. So let's take a second and let's look at everybody's Zoom screen name. If you see mine, I have three things up there, business coach, podcaster, and grandfather. I get more introductions as a grandfather and a podcaster than I do as a business coach. What is your identifier? It can be a word. I don't necessarily need your company name. It could be what you do. If you are in the insurance world, you could put Mike Manning protector. I've got a friend of mine in the health insurance world and she put up there Carol demystifier because she's got to demystify all this health insurance information to make us understand it. So find a connector because your screen name is the door of a, an in-person networking event. When somebody walks in the door, you can talk to them. You want them to look at your screen name and say, ooh, I got to ask what that means. That you're looking for connectors. What's going to make it? Are you going to put best-selling author? Are you good? What is it? It can be a funny, I think you can get up to about seven words. And yeah, we struggle when we get so many people on the screen, you got in this, in the, your screen gets shrunk. So right now on mine, I can't even see the full word business. But when you go to speaker view, then you can see that or at the beginning of the network event. And I highly recommend you always show up early and you always stay late because that's when you're going to get to talk to people and find out who they are, see if there's a connection. But on your Zoom name, that likely is the first time anybody's ever heard of you or seen you. Make that, make that identifier word or two word or three word phrase memorable. I'm talking about key phrases and words. Those are one of the things in Zoom that we've had to learn is how are they going to know me because they can't walk up and shake my hand and talk to me for a minute. Female business owners. If somebody said, I'm looking to meet female business owners, your life just got a whole lot easier as a referral partner for them. Okay, now I know exactly where to go fishing. I know a dozen of them off the top of my head right now I could call to see if they needed your help once I got to know you. But that's a great phrase to throw out because you don't need to explain that. Now, somebody may say, does the industry matter? No, not really. Just want to meet female business owners. Again, I want to meet anybody who hates doing social media. And there's a lot of us because I'm trying and it is hard to be consistent. Let me tell you that. It looks easy, but it is not. So you want to meet people that hate doing that. Let's go back to putting their world in their head. Imagine if you had all day Saturday to take your family to this park or go see this attraction because we're cutting your grass. You don't have to. We're pressure washing your house. You don't have to. Whatever it is, imagine if. Questions at the beginning of elevator pitches are wonderful. Wonderful. Imagine if you didn't have to do this. Again, that gets people thinking. Specific is terrific. I am looking to meet Stephanie Wilson at Mills Appliance. It just doesn't get any better than that, folks. Because your neighbor may not be Stephanie Wilson, but your neighbor might work at Mills Appliance. And you never knew that because they never knew that you were looking for somebody at Mills Appliance. Well, my neighbor's not Stephanie, but my neighbor works there. Let me go ask him if he knows Stephanie, see if I can get you two connected. It doesn't get any better than that when you tell someone specifically that you're wanting to meet. And if you don't know the decision maker there, just give us the company name. And if they have multiple locations, I've seen this before. People ask for real estate offices on the corner of Creedmoor and Glenwood here in Raleigh. That's perfect. I drive by there all the time. But make it easier for people to help you. It's the line in Jerry Maguire, help me help you. Help me help you by helping me make it easier. Tell me where to go fishing for you. How many people we know that just got a dog and that dog yaps all night? And you know the best dog trainer in the free world. 
great opening line. I want to meet anybody who's got a dog that will not let them sleep through the night or pees on their carpet four times a day or goes outside to go to the bathroom, doesn't go to the bathroom, comes back in the house and goes to the bathroom. Again, yep, we got them. But how easy is that though, right? Again, that's what we're looking for. What These are the benefits of working with me. You fill in the blank. Again, we're selling the solution, not the product. Because most people don't really care. Some people will buy things because it's a cool gadget, but most people will buy things because it solves a problem. And then again, people can't get insurance. I, I want to meet people that cannot get insurance. You may have a friend of yours with four speeding tickets and they can't get auto insurance. You just help the person because they helped you by saying, I want to meet some anybody that can't get insurance. Again, that's what we're trying to do. We want those trigger words, those trigger phrases, but more importantly, we want to help. I'm. It's my job to help you find clients for me or referral partners and vice versa. It's your job to educate me. Happy to go help you, but I got to know where I'm going. It's kind of like a roadmap. If you're headed out from here, uh, if you're headed out from Vancouver, give me a small town name about five hours northeast of Vancouver, Roger. Nelson. All right. Would you need a map to get there? You, you can't get GPS. You can't use your phone. Do you need a map to get there? Maybe yes. Same thing here. Give me a roadmap to find your clients and your referral partners. Here's the other thing. When you're doing your elevator pitch, there's three things to actually keep in mind. Well, let me back up. You should have different elevator pitches for different audiences. Lawyers versus stay-at-home moms versus retirees, completely different message. Usually, we stand up and we ask for clients. Not a problem. Keep doing that. The other thing we want to ask for are referral partners. I want to meet CPAs because their clients are business owners. Most of them are at least. So if you introduce me to a CPA that gives me three clients, I want to meet more CPAs because a referral partner sometimes can give you more than that than just the one client. So don't hesitate to ask for referral partners. The other thing is, and we all know somebody or a couple of people like this, ask to meet connectors. They may never do business with you, but they know people that have stuff going on. And we all know connectors. So ask to meet that person that's always networking. You hear their name. You see them on networking events. They post on social media all the time. They're posting pictures of people they're meeting left and right, having lunch, having dinner, playing golf, whatever it is. So ask for clients always, because that's your lifeblood right there. Somebody that'll pay you. Ask for referral partners who will give you more than one client usually. And ask for connectors because they know people that have stuff going on. How much fun would your fill in the blank be? Would your life be? Would your day be? How much fun would your spouse be having if they didn't have to make sure you did this like pressure washing your house poorly? So we're talking about identifiers and connectors. I tell people I'm a 35 year overnight sensation. I graduated college in 1983 and I just knew I was going to do college football play by play on radio forever. You know what? Never happened but that's okay. That's okay. I got no problem, but it's a, it's a, it's a conversation opener. four times small business owner, especially is connecting and helping people, helping others tell their stories. If I ever introduce you to somebody and I know you, I'm going to use that. Built three businesses from scratch. I bought one learning experience, people. It didn't go well. That was a learning experience. It's a good story for those of us that have owned multiple businesses. We've probably been there. It's a conversation opener. I'm a career evolutionist. People go, what does that mean? I don't change jobs. I just learn stuff. It's like, oh, I'd like to try doing that now. And I, you just keep you know, moving up the ladder, but it's a career evolutionist. I'm a grandfather through and through. My, everybody that knows me in this area knows about Oliver. So anytime you want to get in a conversation with me, let's just talk grandkids. I'm good there, but it's a conversation opener. Here's my email. There's my LinkedIn and Roger's got that. A facilitator at Grand Connection. I saw a couple of my... Grand Connection people showing up a little bit late. Still glad to have you here, people. Glad to have you here. Next steps for everybody. When you go home tonight or start tomorrow, 
I want you to start thinking about your action words. I protect, I create, I whatever it is you do, but what are your action words and phrases? I give you back an hour a week. I save you money. I'll give you the best looking landscaping in the whole zip code. What are your action words? And please eliminate the word anybody or anyone. That's just not going to work as well as you think it might work. But what are your action words? It would be good to have two or three different elevator pitches depending on who your audience is. The other reason why it's important is if you meet the same people every week, you might not want to give the same pitch every week because people will tune out. When you ask people for something, they have to decide, do I want to go through my mental Rolodex or do I want to listen to the rest of it? So they may not listen to the whole thing, which is why you have to be memorable. So when you're doing your elevator pitch, as I spoke about earlier, give your first name right off the bat so they know who you are and what you do. Talk about solutions you have. And at the very end, give your name again. Some people just stop talking. They may have tuned out, but they hear your name again and go, oh, that's right. Or they may not have heard it correctly at the beginning. So give your first name and what you do at the beginning and the end. Make that elevator pitch sandwich, bread, meat, bread. There you go. That's another way they'll help remember you. Name and company, oh, there you go. Name and company, start to finish. There it is. In your Zoom name, it is very, very important to connect any way you can. And folks, we're, I don't know, I think you guys are probably going to be in COVID as long as we are and doing Zoom as long as we are, and it's still going to be a while. And I think even once we get released back out into the public, I'm still going to do Zoom. This is great for me because I don't have to drive anywhere. I didn't realize how much time I spent in my car and how much gas money I spent. But I like Zoom, so it's here to stay for me. And you're going to practice, practice, practice. That's how you'll get better. That's how you'll learn what not to say, how to say it. Find out if you have those keywords and phrases in there. Record yourself. Everybody has that one friend that tells them if they're awesome and if they were horrible. And that's the friend you need to send your elevator pitch to or do it in front of them live. If that's the person that will tell you you're really good or really bad or somewhere in the middle and you trust them, you must believe what they say and act accordingly. But only do this to the people that will tell you, oh, Mike, yeah, kind of put me to sleep, dude. But I trust them. So I got that information. But you want to hear that from somebody that will tell you in a loving way that you believe, eh, you may need to work on that or don't ever stop saying that. That just sums you up perfectly. But practice, practice, practice. So Wired to Change is my business. My uh, coaching partner and I love working with small business owners, mainly on sales and marketing. We have a program called Pitch Your Niche, which is basically what I've been talking about today. But I've got a series of questions you answer that help draw out those keywords and phrases and explain one of the things I ask you to do, explain your business in five words. Can you do that? Can you explain what you do in five words? Great. Because if you struggle explaining to me, not necessarily in five words, but in 30 seconds, if I don't know what you do, how can I refer you? That's why we have to be specific and use stories because I can tell a story all day long. I can remember that all day long. Corporate speak, not so good. So special offer for the folks here today. Can I do this now, Roger? Yes, far away, Mike. Okay. Special offer. Normally this program, it's two one-hour meetings. It's normally $99, 59 bucks for everybody in the house today. My program is called Pitch Your Niche. If you're interested, just shoot me an email. We'll find a time. Basically, the first meeting is I send you a series of questions that you answer. And at our first meeting, we go over that. And I ask a ton of questions. I drive people crazy. I ask questions. And then when we're done with the first meeting, your homework assignment is, okay, with all this knowledge and everything we talked about, you're going to write two new elevator pitches. And the second meeting, we go over that. And then you're off and running. 
I don't promise many things, but you will be better. That much I can promise you because I need to be entertained and I need to be connected with, and it's generally with keywords and phrases. So I know if it's working for me, it's probably working for others, but would love to help anybody that needs help. But that's my offer to the folks here tonight. And I thank you very much for coming out and giving me this opportunity. And uh, Mike, uh, should we assume that those are Canadian dollars or are they oh, American dollars? My apologies. Those are U.S. dollars. Yes, They're thank American you. American dollars. Oh, I should have okay. known that. Yep. I got to get used to that. That's actually a good teaching moment, Roger. Thank you. Great. Uh, Mike, on behalf of uh, uh, all the 71,000 EIN members who will have the opportunity to watch this training, uh, I thank you. Uh, you have really taken the mystery out of what makes for a good elevator pitch. Uh, you put a little bit of science, a little bit of structure into it with your insightful questions. So uh, thank I thank you on behalf of us all. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate your opportunity. Folks, it's not easy. It is not easy to condense your world into 30 seconds, but we have to and pick one item at a time, make it a story and a solution, make it personal, and you're generally going to have a lot better connection opportunities than you would if you, we just stood up there and gave our 30-second corporate speak. And I can see the 30 seconds down to five words being uh, equal uh, hey, challenge. You'd be surprised what, the, and that'll trigger upwards to, you, we can go for those five words to 30 seconds very easily because that's the core of what you do, and then we can build on that. So it's actually a pretty good exercise. Lovely.